Yo, you wanna know how to edit something like this? What's going on YouTube? It's Ali Dope and I'm checking in once again with another YouTube video. So today we're gonna break down some of the effects and how I achieved them in that fashion short that I shot in part one. Today we're just gonna focus on Premiere just for the beginners, just so people can come in and just add some easy flair to some of their shots if they're just beginning using Adobe Premiere or just getting into the whole fashion editing game. Now, this is part two. If you haven't already, please go watch part one so you can get a full idea of the steps that it takes from ideation to creation. Don't forget to drop a like if this helps you in any way throughout the video. And don't forget to subscribe. Take a second, take two seconds right now, click that subscribe and hit that bell for the algorithm so you won't miss a drop. I don't want you to miss out. You shouldn't either. Hit that bell, hit that subscribe for the kid, man. Come on, we keep going up. Now, without further ado, let's hop into the computer and let's get started. We're gonna hop right into Premiere, man. So as you can see, I already have my timeline pretty much laid out already. In part one, I mentioned filming with your editing in mind. So post-production in mind when you're putting your shot list together and all those different things. So when I had those shots together in my head, I kind of had a seamless flow of what I wanted to go with. And I already had the song in mind. If you go look on my Instagram right now, at Ali Dope, at Only Dope Media, go check this. The link's down below, you feel me? Um, but I really wanted to use the Lil Baby in a Minute song for real for Instagram and TikTok. I'm not biased. And shorts, too. You know what I'm saying? We love them all. But anyways, I was like, I really wanted to that song. Obviously, we can't play it because copyright. So I wanted something that was along the same lines that I could just use for YouTube. So I did double up and use find a, I found a song with a similar tempo or BPM, whatever it was called. And, uh, and that's how I get kind of like the same, same cut. So I only have to edit it once to the beat instead of having to try to recut it to a different type of sound um that's some of the issues you come up with too um because one times you might want to be able to use it for one thing and then have to repurpose it for something else so that's what i did so first i did i went and i laid it out i went and laid out each little clip that i wanted to use i felt like starting off with the shoes would be cool to bring in the the crowd and the atmosphere and this shot was really a strong shot i really like the turning and we're going like opposite ways you know the crisscross effect so when you use that i use a little time ramp a little time remap remap right there if you don't know how to time remap it's a basic premiere thing all you got to do is um go in and click it right here and then click go time remap click like a couple of positions that you want and um you can just go ahead and remap it like if you wanted two clips right here right here you can you know make them bigger smaller that type of thing and play around with them and that's how you get that if i want another pause right there before it goes in even faster then i could have done that but we're gonna keep it how it was next we're gonna go with i went with like this shot to introduce uh jay grant make sure everybody can see what he's looking like after you introduce the shoes, I felt like that was another strong shot. Then he gives a nice strong look at the camera. But yeah. So pretty much all I did was lay it out first. I laid out all my A-roll. My strong A-roll. Like this is all B-roll at the top as you guys can see. But I laid out all my A-roll. My clips of all my um clips. I just went and laid them out. I laid out my photos on the timeline. Real short clips. So it gave the motion because all video is our motion pictures so you can use pictures in them as long as they have some sort of motion and it's moving in some sort of way that's what i meant by mixed media and going an extra mile in part one after that i pretty much laid everything out added all my time remaps which i shouldn't have done now that i learned the hard way and resolve when i sent it over to resolve it gave me all kinds of problems when i brought it over but you know you live and you learn this was a practice test anyway so 
I just did a couple of dope clips that I would cool and I learned in Resolve when you bring in stuff over from Premiere to make sure you drag a little extra because sometimes when you're editing and adding effects later on the Premiere only has what Resolve sent over which is already colored because it had to go ahead and render it the color and it can't render out new clips in Premiere if that makes sense but anyways it's all pretty much laid out here laid down so then I went I sent it to um, resolve right after I brought it in from resolve I did all my nice coloring and I added like a dope like film effect to it I've been using a lot of film coloring grades on my pictures I don't know why it's just I just like that dark gritty feel that's my style you know that works for works for me so after that I went ahead and add all these extras you know added some warp stabilizer into the image nested it you know now it's, it's looking pretty clean kitty pretty smooth this is a pretty cool effect right here you have the two clips duplicate this you can press the alt and just pull it up you're gonna shift it over by like two keyframes all right so this one we're gonna just hide this for now and we're gonna add this transition right here that transition would be called uh, you could just use slide really regular slide or push we're gonna use push we'll use push all right so we got the push going anti alien we turn that high cool so now we got a nice little push going put the push down to like the corner of the where these line up right here your second your first clip the clip on top and the two clips make sure everything aligns so it looks everything is looking at once boom now I want to add some discolorization to the bottom clip just so it's uh different textures when it's making this movement we're gonna just add a black and white right here on the bottom clip so now you got this push to the clip right here now with this one we're going to just turn this back on and as you can see now it just drops and you see nothing so now with this one i'm going to click right here and we're just doing a quick little keyframe action start at zero and then go all the way to the end and then just go back to 100 or whatever you want to do it you could even go up to these corners here in the middle go back down and then end back on at a hundred you know be you know be tricky you know play around with the keyframes that's how you learn then you're gonna just easy ease these and now you got the, the dope effect So, boom, you got that. It's coming in as the other one leaves. So now you got textures. You see how it's like, see, that's a frame in itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody stopped your video, that could be a cool frame. And it comes at you out of nowhere. It lines, comes back small. And if you wanted to, when it comes back small, I could grab this, alt this. I mean, I said alt this, duplicate that shift it over a little bit I can even nest it so then it keeps the keyframes that's already in there it'll keep those keyframes I'm nesting it and I'm just making it a little bit bigger than the one underneath just so it has texture but it's gonna do the same exact thing maybe a little later because it is back to keep a couple of keyframes so now it's like staggered here we go boom That's pretty cool. It's so much texture going on. It's so many layers, so much movement. And that's the whole key to effects too. 
You don't have to put a bunch of stuff and mask this and roto scoop that. Sometimes it's cool, but sometimes you just need something quick just to get the point across and to give your shots. Because a lot with fashion films, they don't like a lot of like sometimes it depends what kind of fashion film it is but fashion high fashion films are more or less like really clean real more or less focused on the clothes so they don't want a bunch of effects and stuff on the clothes because you want to be able to see the product so this is a cool little effect just to give it some texture run that one more time but yeah that's that effect so now as i said we're going through here this is a pretty cool effect too this is nothing but some quick masking underneath for this all I did was take once again take the bottom layer turn this off so the bottom layer I added these and this is all in Premiere too I didn't act I didn't use any plugins nothing for the bottom layers I just added a HLS and a VR glow and gave the glow some pop I just added a few keyframes into the brightness into the radius to give it this like shining type of vibe and I just circled you know the um, HLS and I just circled the hue like 150 170 I think it is just so you know you could change the colors a little bit more so boom now you have this at the bottom but that's once I said once again I said it's too much going on for fashion films so what I did was like I said duplicate those on top this was the original footage so now all I did was mask out the doors since so it's pretty easy doors and things like that is easy to mask in um, keyframe because it's not uh, too many um, points and it doesn't take too much time you can do it quickly so boom now you got the door the door changing colors he's kind of like looking over at the door that's pretty cool this one the door that he just passed now that one's blinking and if I really wanted to if I had extra time I would have done each little window and probably did the window through behind him and I probably would have rotoscoped it like I said it's levels to this but I'm gonna start doing some more premiere tutorials stuff like that I like talking about how I break down some of my edits and stuff like that so boom that's pretty clean cut like I said with these I just move the pictures around a little bit just so it can have some texture instead of not just having pictures itself but yeah this is a cool effect that's coming up right here he's walking this way and i like started to walk into him with the camera now i got these paper rips you can check these paper rips out link in my bio basically all i did was add some motion to them so we're just gonna go ahead and check that out check this sequence out jay grant walking from left to right i walk in i zoom in i add like a time remap here just so it's a nice fast going to him and now it slows down as it walks behind and now i have these clips of the paper rip moving around revealing what's underneath it's the next clip but it's coming in differently so similar to me cutting out him and putting him in different spaces and then putting him in the same spot I know you guys seen that clone effect um, I decided to go ahead and add my paper rips so let's go ahead and add that we can do that right now so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the paper rips right I added the circle but you use triangle you can use whatever and you're just gonna really just move them you're gonna keep it centered just move it around the composition like this in different situations so now you have it and it's just moving around boom okay so now we nested this sequence of the paper rips this is gonna be our paper whip sequence right here and it's just gonna be like I said the paper rips moving from side to side but it looks a little weird right now right and now you're asking why would you put the footage underneath how are you gonna be able to see it right okay so to achieve this effect all you're gonna need to do is place your first clip there into your second clip so it's going from this clip to this clip and this is the little time remap skirt into this time remap time remap there you go right now we had the paper rips the paper rips now are in there we just added those and we moved those around the comp a little bit 
So what we're gonna do on it again is I had to go ahead and nest this so I can add the warp stabilizer, but you don't have to, it depends on your footage. You're gonna take this footage and you're just gonna duplicate this and put this footage right here underneath it, pretty much, right? This footage is underneath, but you can't see. Boom. So now we're gonna add what we call a track map. A key to the layer with the footage on it. And that's why you put the paper rips right above it. Go ahead and video four. Now you got this. Now you got this track mat of now wherever you moved around that paper rip is where it's gonna show revealing the footage underneath it. So whatever's gonna be underneath it is what it's gonna reveal. Right? So me, I just take it, I also duplicate the paper rip underneath everything, just so everything kind of has like the, that's still rip feeling because the track mat takes the whole mat itself. So me, I just kind of try to line it back up the best way I can. So boom, now we got this paper rip. Boom, and it's following it because it's the same paper rip. If you were anal, I'd move it and add the keyframes per position so that everything could be seen. But that's how I like to do it. I'm pretty sure there's a hundred ways how to do paper rips. This is just how I do it real quick. Sometimes I don't be having time to do the full length Monty. So this is how I do it real quick just to have some motion and have some um, displacement on my transitions. And then you just turn on the bottom layer. Now you have your remap. Boom into your paper rips to reveal the the footage below so now we have everything boom we go back to the timeline yeah once again it's pretty a seamless timeline a lot of cuts it's pretty simple this is one of my simpler timelines a little film film screen right there once again a nice little dope scene and once again I put scenes that look like they were in the same area together so then it's like more of a story you know we're going somewhere first he was outside walking around now he was on the phone now he's in some sort of building in an elevator you know what I'm saying tell the story why are you showing off the clothes it's not just show off my clothes like try to tell some sort of a story now I got this, and this is just After Effects, Rotoscope, Black and White, Mr. Mercury. I, when I start doing like some music video tutorials, then I'll go ahead and really get into After Effects, but I wanna keep this pretty premiere, just so whoever's watching this can be like, oh, I can do this quickly as well. And they don't feel like, oh, I have to, you know, open up After Effects or anything. I just want them to be like, I could just cut something real quick, real short, real easy to show off my clothes and then that's going into this where I just went into him and then I zoomed out I felt like this is pretty cool right here this is an in-camera shot where it does a nice reveal of the city in the background so boom what you're gonna have is three clips but you're seeing three moving clips at one time. You're seeing three moving clips at one time. They're all moving. They all have different vibes to them, right? So I cropped everything so then you can see and reveal what's below. So this one's the top one. You're gonna see that one. This one's itself and then that one. But you're gonna have the layer below, which is gonna be the reveal. But you don't want them just to come in, right? We're gonna put them at the end because this is where it's gonna be at. So you come in, boom, boom, boom. Nice little city reveal. Then you're gonna have this weird cut of him in the city or him on the rooftop. But it, it's really harsh. How do you combat that? Once again, we're gonna just do an easy switcheroo. We're gonna use push. You can, you can use slide, whatever. Throw that on there just like that. 
and then bring this push all the way down here like just make it really t tiny or really small like the duration of the effect shouldn't be a minute long it should be real quick real swift now when you see this push it's pushing in from this left side we're gonna change we just click on this click on the transition and click the up arrow because we want to come in coming in from the top so boom this one's coming in from the top we're gonna add the same push effect make this one a little bit longer we're gonna push this to the right we're gonna have it coming underneath the one that we just did so boom so now you have something like this Turn this one off. So now you're gonna have something like this. There you go. You see how they're crossing? And now it's laid in this position. Same thing with this one. Push. This one's gonna be the same length as the top. Because we want it a little bit sooner. And we're gonna bring this one in from the right. So boom, here we go. Turn it on, LOL. So now they're both switching positions and one is coming in from the top. Boom. And just make sure you crop out all the stuff that you need to crop. Me, I was being lazy, so I just didn't crop it all. Then you just turn on your bottom layer and then you can have a nice little reveal. Boom. That's cool. And it's like you still have your video underneath, so so many layers going on underneath. Boom. So you can see everything. So many levels to it. Boom. And then you start leaving and deleting stuff as it goes. And then you could just swipe it back up, you know, swipe it down. Make them split, make them move. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get creative, man. You know what I'm saying? You could, I'm gonna just show you real quick just cause we're just running through some ideas. You could just do like a split on here, like in the middle of this one. Like it would be so random, but say it was something underneath there. This was split, right? That was split. I'm gonna do the split right here. This was split. And we'll split that. Reverse. So then we'll split that. And it'll slide off. And then we'll just go ahead and click push. And we'll push these. Something like that. Push this to the right. You know, split. And then I probably split the split the middle one too. Split that one from the top. So now you got this. Cool little insert stop. There you go. Why you just gotta keep things moving. And this all premiere. They got pushed like this is regular. Push it. Push, 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 split. And that'd be revealing something else below, you know? It's like if it was uh, if it was down here, it'd be something like this. You know? So yeah, that's pretty much that on that. Pretty simple effects, man. I just finished it off with laying out the rest of the clips of him on the rooftop. Added some more photos. This is a simple little effect right here. Quick little, little mask effect I did. I just added the two photos next to each other. I duplicated the photo. I masked the photo out. 
So I masked it. It's a mask around here. So I created a dope little mask on a photo. You don't have to screenshot and freeze frame everything. I just grabbed the photo from the location, added a photo, and I added some directional blur, and I added some offset to the picture underneath. So now it's like moving. Yeah, man. We kept it pretty simple for this one. Let me know if y'all liking these. If y'all liking my like conceptual videos that walk you through the creative process so it's not just simply oh just how to do this effect or that effect like i want it a little bit more intricate i want you to know the thought process behind how to create something instead of just something quick and easy like i'm gonna add effects and stuff in there as i start getting into music videos and things like that but i do want to talk to you guys about the concepts and the creative process behind creating some of these elements and creating some of these effects that you could do for yourself i'm not trying to pay for too many programs I'm, i actually just deleted um, Red Giant and I deleted Sapphire They were lagging my computer But They're cool to use but a lot of those effects You can achieve in the program anyway So just right now for the rest of the, I think the summer I'm probably gonna Not even use pretty much a lot of effects On a lot of my videos like I'm just doing a lot of masking a lot of actual Movement and keyframe too many colors And stuff like that um, Coming up It's just getting a little played out so it's just like You always want to be ahead of the game so you just want to figure out how a different way that you can create some of these same effects and still keep people's attention. Now, hopefully that helped you guys in some way, shape or form. And it got the gears turning on some of the effects and some simple ideas and some simple effects that you can do in your next music video, fashion shoot, cooking shoot, beauty shoot, whatever shoot. You know what I'm saying? These are the same, the same concepts using basic keyframes, basic motion, just thinking outside the box, not always having to use rotoscopes and all these extra effects you know what i'm saying so i just want everybody to be on the same playing field as far as the story that you're telling you don't have to use a bunch of effects but make sure the effects that you use are being effective but in the meantime in between time y'all keep hustling you got to keep creating and most importantly keep learning until next time i'll be dope i'm checking out yes sir